Hi, I'm Tim Daniels from lapsofthashutter.com and today I want to show you how to use a quick method to take low dynamic range photos like this one and really make them pop, like this, without using HDR or blending exposures. This is just one exposure with a few simple tweaks in Photoshop. All we will be using is saturation masks and a few adjustment layers. If you want to know how to make your own saturation masks, take a look at the how to create and use saturation masks video. Or if you want to jump right in and get started straight away, download the totally free Photoshop Color Control Action Pack from lapsoftheshutter.com. Let's start by using the Action Pack from lapsoftheshutter.com to create saturation masks. If we take a look at the masks individually, you can see that they've produced much better selections than we could make by hand, and much different selections than would have been created by something like luminosity masks. Low dynamic range photos can be difficult to process, as most of the complex selection methods like luminosity masks tend to fail, and there isn't enough dynamic range to blend exposures through HDR. This means you're left with hand drawing masks and making global adjustments, neither of which are easy to get exactly right. This is where saturation masks have an advantage, as they select parts of a photo based on the colour saturation level. This means that they will still produce useful selections, even on low dynamic range photos. If you want to, you can use them to blend exposures, but low dynamic range photos don't require any blending to make them look good, just a few targeted adjustments. Now to make this photo really pop, we can simply load one of these masks by control clicking on the thumbnail on the channels tab and adding an adjustment layer. In this case, I've taken the low saturation three mask added a colour balance layer and made some adjustments. And this simple adjustment has already caused some interesting changes to the colour tone on the tree, the mountains and the rocks beneath the lake. Let's make a similar adjustment with a high saturation 3 layer and also a colour balance. Now we'll use those same two masks to add contrast. But instead of using one curves layer, we will split this contrast adjustment over two curves layers. When you are using saturation masks, you can make much larger changes to the adjustment layers than you otherwise would. Here, we are adding overall contrast by brightening the low saturation layer and darkening the high saturation layer. This is a very good way of adding contrast to low dynamic range photos in general. Take a look at the contrast that's been added to the stones and rocks beneath the water. Once this is complete, we can finish off by adding some small adjustments with a mid saturation mask get the overall tone and colour to where we want them. This feels like a dark grey photo, so we can darken with a curves layer and reduce vibrance and saturation. And after that, that's the finished photo, using only a few simple to apply adjustment layers. This is not only a really powerful method of working on low dynamic range photos, but landscape and cityscape photos in general. If saturation masks are new to you, Take a look at the free text and video tutorials available from lapsoftheshutter.com, particularly how to create and use saturation masks and get pristine and total colour control with saturation masks. You can also download the totally free Lightroom Develop System, Photoshop Colour Control Action Pack and Photoshop Landscape Colour Grades, all available from lapsoftheshutter.com.